Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Q&A show. This is the Ice Project. I am your host, Ice. As always, this content is brought to you by Cali Partners, the number one accounting firm in Sydney, in the game. Danny is the GOAT. Um, deal with a girl named Nat as well. So if you need accounting, hit up Danny, hit up Nat. They look after everything YKTR. One of the great things about them, they do a monthly reporting system so you can actually see where you're making money, where you need to be growing. And it's kind of like stepping on the scales as well. So you can't grow or you can't, Think of it like losing weight. If you're trying to lose weight, the best thing you can do is step on the scales every single day. Have a look at the number that puts you in progression. Same thing with um, business. If you want to grow and you want to make more money or you want to see where you're leaking money, you have to stand on the scales. You have to know where your numbers are going or where you're leaking cash or where there's a hole in the bucket or or this is going great. Let's double down on that. Let's allocate resources to that. And that's what accounting does for you. So hit them up. Northern Beaches, Cali Partners, Danny, Nat, the goats in the game all right let's just roll straight into the questions service-based businesses easiest way to make money with zero to slash low capital i fucking hate this question i get these these types of questions a lot what's the quickest way for me to make money what's the quickest way there's a saying if the fence that goes up fast falls down fast so not going to answer that question um i feel like it's a lazy question it's someone that's just trying to make quick cash not about that um best thing you can do is build a brand that lasts forever or take into the mindset of a brand that's trying to last forever. That's the way I, I'd I'd be looking at it. And I've done these types of things in the past, like drop shipping and all that sort of corny stuff like that. And just, I don't know, you're better off trying to build a brand that can impact people. And that's how I see it. I wanted to start a potty. Do you start it underneath your existing clothing brand or personal? I think both can work. So if you do a clothing podcast, I think you're going to be a little bit limited. I think the best way to build it out is uh, through personal you can build it out as personal, but then put it underneath your clothing page and your personal page as well. That's why you can maximize engagement. That's the way I've done it in the past as well. And if you look at a lot of the cool brands that I look up to, you kind of know who their founder is or or who they're rolling with. You look at um, Keith, Ronnie Fag, you look at Off-White, Virgil. I think we're in a phase now where a lot of people want to know who the founder is as well. So um, I think it's a really important phase moving forward. So you can do both. Each can work. Australian made products, is it worth the extra dollars or nah? It's a great marketing tool when you say we're Australian made. In terms of quality, I don't think it's better than China. China's the manufacturer to the world. They make all the biggest brands, Nike, Adidas, all the big dogs, even designer stuff as well. You just can't really mess with China right now. You can make Australian, but there's going to be a cost to it as well. In my opinion, it isn't worth it unless you're trying to promote a higher end product and there's a brand right now in australia that does really well really good business model won't say the name i don't want to put this shit out there um but they're 100 australian made and it sounds cool we're 100 australian made but there's a cost to that so instead of selling a t-shirt for 60 70 80 bucks you're selling a t-shirt for 180 so there's a space for it but you're just going to have to market it to the right directions or the right demographics or uh higher end people with more disposable income rich people so you have to market it that way. Then that way you got to think of your marketing. It's got to be placed a certain way. You got to get it on the right people. It definitely can work. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't think it's worth it right now. And there's two types of questions that you can have there as well. So yeah, do it if you want. You're just gonna have to market your. You can just kind of have to price your product a little higher. How do you approach gaining a mentor? Do they have to be in the same field, or you wish you weren't? A, I like to have diversity within mentors um how you approach them I'm, I'm sort of being fortunate enough where i've been in a position where kind of guys who are a lot more successful than me um i can lean on them for advice i'm not really paying a mentor right now where i'll pay all right here's ten thousand bucks and i need an hour meeting with you once once a month that type of stuff does happen and and you can get great return off that because you, you're tapping into their time. And the reason they're mentors is because they, they're usually been through the situations that you're trying to go through right now and they can sort of break it down and make it a little bit easier for you. Um, how you approach it and do they need to be in the same field? It's kind of hard because I've kind of just had mentors come to me and, and I get to know them on a friendly basis and, and be able to ask them questions. A great way to do it is start a podcast. And this is why I started a podcast because I wanted to talk to people that were smarter than me. And then you produce a great interview and you produce great content for them and you pass it on to them. And then that way you can build a relationship with them and you can ask them different types of questions. Like Pip Edwards is an example of that for me. I've had Ma Boris jump on as well. I've got a couple mentors that I won't say their names as well where when things start to happen and I've built a kind of good relationship with them, 
um, I can ask him for something as well. Ask him for advice. And sometimes there's one or two questions and a lot of the times I do already know the answer. You just want to hear it from someone smarter than you. So it's great to have one who's in a similar field than you because obviously you want to grow in that space. But you want to have one in... Um, like when I was younger, I used to just look up to football players. And if you look up to their football players, they're essentially not everyone's perfect. For example, you look at different areas of their life and like, I don't really like that or something like that. I feel like it's, it's good to have multiple different mentors in different spaces of life. You might want to have a financial mentor. You want to have a business mentor. You might want to have a relationship mentor. Um, you might just want to have talk to an older guy who's just been through life and wants to pass on these type of different types of experiences. So mentors is a really interesting one for me, but I'm not really, yeah, I don't really have the answer to that, but my best advice would be start a podcast because most people like talking about themselves and you can get them on and, and uh, <laughs> get them talking about themselves and you kind of build a relationship with them from there. We'd love to hear more about e-commerce product supply challenges. Basically, the whole world supply chain is going down right now. And a couple of challenges we're facing right now as a business is uh, products taking too long to get here. So a lot of businesses have payment terms where which, what that means is we'll buy the product off you, but you have to pay us in this time. So what's actually happening from here to here is say it's like 30 days or 60 days. The supply chains where it's happening for us is China's taking longer to make clothes. Um, we're it's hard to get stuff onto a ship. The ships are taking longer to get over here. And what actually happens is you actually go past your payment terms as well. Um, floods are happening. Wars are happening. Politics are happening. We're rolling to an election. US dollars going up. So your products are going to be costing a lot more. So you're making less margin. There's all these different types of things that happen within business. Product lands on the docks it's taking a longer time to get to our warehouses it's taking our warehouse a longer time to get in so what actually it does it, it pushes you past your payment terms and you start owing people a lot of money um so those are the types of troubles troubles that we're having and, and it's just a standard cash flow problem but it's happening to everyone i just had a friend with a i just had bricky with a friend just then same thing different industry same problem so supply chains are slowing down uh, logistics are slowing down there's a lot of world events that are happening right now. World War Three, COVID. We've had bushfires here. We've had floods here. We've had everything going on. And what it does is slows everything down, but you still got to pay your suppliers and you still got to pay people. And when they come knocking, it starts to get a little bit interesting as well. So that's sort of the hard part about supply chains right now. First steps into setting up a clothing business. Um, come up for name, come up for brand, come up with your first one or two T-shirts. Throw it on Instagram. We'll probably move towards something like TikTok right now. Instagram's kind of dead to me. Um, and yes, yeah, if you can sell a couple, see if you can sell 10, see if you can sell 20, if you can sell 30. If you get to a point where you're selling probably about 40, 50 units, 30 to 40 units, um, separate orders a month, head to China. Are you starting? Are you staking or earning any crypto interest from any of your crypto investments or just holding? I'm just holding right now. Like I said on my last episode is... I kind of just want to make money outside the market with the skill set that I have in terms of business entrepreneurship, um, personal leverage, branding, podcasting, ad revenue, and then putting any disposable income there and just holding. So I probably won't see the value of that until four years, probably 10 years is more realistic, but I'm not staking or anything. I know how to do that, but I'm just not doing that. I just, my interest isn't in there. I'm just kind of setting it to the side. I also put money in shares as well. Would you be able to share your experiences on creating a shoe, pros and cons? Really, really hard. Really, really hard. You can see why anyone can start a clothing brand today. Not anyone can start a shoe shoe company today. So the hard parts about it is you can't, unless you're going to China to make them. And I know Adidas and Nike and all the big dogs are over in those places like there, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Vietnam. Uh, you have to make like a thousand minimum. So if you've never launched a shoe before or you don't have an existing brand, uh, China won't even look at you until you've got a thousand. So you have to go over to places like Portugal and stuff like that where they do lower MOQs, but the price of your shoe goes higher. So it's standard economies of scale. So say if you want to make a hundred shoes. So the shoe that we made, the SE, really cool shoe, probably with our brand should have been priced around 150, but it was costing us like 120, 130 bucks to make as well. So we priced them at 200, 220. Our demographics like, yo, that's way too high. That's more expensive than Nike. Um, because Nike are making 10,000 shoes at a time, so they go a little bit cheaper, and our quality was never going to be as good as Nike. So you fall into that demographic straight away where 
sorry, you fall into that fault straight away where people just compete to Nike straight off the bat, where you don't have the factories or, or the pricing points where you can make them a lot cheaper. So you can sell them a lot cheaper, but then you just have to try and sell them on as well. So that's the hard part, obviously finding manufacturers and designers to build out shoes and stuff like that. And you can see why like a lot of brands that are a bit smaller launch a shoe, they price them around like 450 or 300 or 500, whatever it is, because realistically the margin is not really there for it to grow or for you to be sustained in cash flow the next next stock that comes through. So really hard. Um, wouldn't recommend it unless you had a fuckload of capital or a fuckload of capital or a big market already. And if you see like a lot of people, they'll do collabs of shoes as well. So you look at the off-white shoe as it is, probably not the coolest looking shoe, but then you look at the 10, which was the collaboration that Virgil done with uh, Nike where he grabbed the 10 best shoes and flipped it and, and done something cool with it. That was cool. So you see those kind of influences move towards that space and see if there's a market for it, then potentially launch your own shoe. But I don't know. And then Nike, Nike and Adidas, his branding is so strong. It's hard to beat. Like I love Nike. I love Adidas. Uh, 20 business growth ideas. How do you call the list and choose the couple to work for? That'd be easy. Just pick the ones that you think are going to help your business grow the most and try that. If it doesn't work, move on to one of the other ones. I think business 20 business growth ideas is a lot. So there's going to be plenty of shit in there, respectfully. Um, but focus on the ones that are actually going to help your business grow. If you were to host an entrepreneur's owner's event in Aussie, what would it look like? Uh, I'm probably not the guy. Like I know people associate me with business and entrepreneurship, but probably because I look, I don't really look like the business guy. Like I come from a rough town. I'm a footy guy. Um, didn't finish high school, never went to uni. So people who have had an interest in business that kind of look like me kind of gravitate towards me. And I get that, but I'm probably not the guy to sort of host an event. Who knows? I could be. That sounds like a market that you could market to as well. So uh, what would it look like? Just a standard event, your sort of fireside chats, sit up there on the stage, host it, ask the questions, meet and greet after, and try and do a build a networking thing after that as well. So it would just be standard. It wouldn't be trying to reinvent the wheel. Advice for someone in their 20s who was lost in life and doesn't know where to go? Oh, tough question. I don't have the answer to this, but when I was in my 20s and I, I kind of knew generally where I wanted to go, and that was business, the question I used to ask myself was, if I could wake up every single day and do exactly what I wanted, what would that day look like? And the thing was, I didn't have the answer to that straight away, but I used to ask myself that question every single day. Like every morning I'd go for a walk and I was like, what, what does my dream day look like? Or what does my average day look like? And how can I make it fun? And if you look at my lifestyle now, it's actually a manifestation of everything I wrote down probably four or five years ago. Like I actually want to live closer to the beach. I wanted a nice office. I wanted to try and build a brand that's trying to do something positive. I wanted to help people. And these are the things I wrote down. And slowly I moved towards that. Like I moved, like I started out west and I moved to Claysville. Then I moved to Rosebury, um, which was where my office was, or Alexandria where my office is. And then I basically live 200 meters from the beach and environment's really important to me and where I live and who I hang around with and what I listen to really important to me. Um, so I kind of focus in on that and manifested it, wrote it down as a goal and just slowly chipped away at it. And that's my advice for someone in their 20s. The other part is, and I used to always hear Gary Vee say this, is like, I'm 33, I'm still like a little bit lost, not lost in life, but I still feel like the same as I did at 23 or 22 or 18 obviously you're a little bit smarter and you make different decisions and hangovers take twice as long to get over but in my mind i still feel young man i still feel i still want to do shit um so yeah don't be in a rush but ask yourself that question and i hope you find your way bro i honestly do can i stop using alibaba and start looking in my own backyard are we there yet I don't think so. I sort of touched on this in the last episode. I think manufacturing Aussie is very expensive. If you want to do cut and sew, obviously you can do like printing on stuff as well and that, that model could work. But um, yeah, I'd be staying here. How do you balance work, study with relationships, family time and other goals such as fitness? I'm probably the worst person to ask this question. Like My life right now is I'm in bed like 7.30 watching um a doco or something i'm in bed by asleep by 8 8 30 i'm up about four um go for a run coffee swim or shower and just come straight to work as well so i don't probably have that balance but in saying that like i love my life i think it's mad 
Um, and probably there's a consequence for that. Like I'm single, I don't have a relationship. Um, don't have a girlfriend, don't have kids, but that allows me to focus in hundred percent on what I need to do. But, um, yeah, it's, I think finding the right partner is so important. Like there's so many relationships on Instagram that look great, but behind the scenes they're not. I think if you want to do all those different things, you need to find the right partner that can help you support that. And I, I don't mean codependency where you're relying on each other. Cause I think relationships is should be built off independent happiness and two individuals going towards a certain direction. They kind of cross over in this beautiful space that becomes a relationship. But um, yeah, it's hard. You just got to, there's always going to be a consequence. If you're trying to build a business from start, you're going to have to sacrifice time. And if you sacrifice that time with business, you're going to have to sacrifice that somewhere else. And I was in a relationship two years ago and probably me, probably me focusing on business too much um, deteriorated, helped that made that relationship deteriorate as well. Still great friends, get along with all my exes and stuff like that, but there's a consequence for everything in life. And if you want to build something great, sometimes it's relationships. If you want to stay in a relationship, sometimes the consequences um, is starting a business. If a lot of people talk to me and go, oh, Ice, I got kids, I um, want to start a business. There's two things in life. You can either use your everything in life as motivation or an excuse as well. So um, of course, it's, tough to start a business if you got kids and you got mouths to feed and stuff like that but then you can also look at your kids and go yo i'm gonna start this anyway and i'm gonna figure out a way that i can make your life better or you have friends that are trying to weigh you down um stuff like that there's everything in life is either there's two paths you can take and use them as motivation or an excuse how do you stay mo how do you stay on task and motivated when hardships and other areas of life arise that's hard because life happens everything in life happens say so with us in business, like there's all this shit that's happening at the moment, just going to try and figure out and double down and keep moving forward as well. And a lot of people try and do too much in one day and not enough in a week or not enough in a year. I think just developing really good habits and, and understanding that bad things are going to happen in life and they have to happen for the good to exist as well. So if you understand diversity and all that sort of stuff, really important. I generally don't believe in motivation. I just see things i see it two ways you're either disciplined no matter how tired you are no matter how wet it is outside you go up and go for your run there's those types of guys and then there's guys that actually enjoy what they're doing so i'll come to work and i've got like a 10 11 hour day today but like this is fun for me like i love it i love doing everything here so this is fun um, i'm not necessarily always disciplined but i do love what i do as well so if you're someone who doesn't know me or does know me and you look at me you're like oh that guy's doing x um he's so motivated i'm actually not i'm just doing what i love and then there's the other guys who are just disciplined no matter how they feel got a headache um feeling sick or down they still go out and do it those guys look motivated they're just disciplined so sticking to understanding who you are and sticking to it and just keep progressing forward all right guys that is a wrap on the q a show we'll do more of these as well you want to join me in the circle if you get any value out of this content it's a fucking level up from that so i'll put the details down below thanks for tuning in appreciate it, guys stay doozy